Making your own samosa wraps at home is just so easy. Hey friends, this is a very easy recipe that yields very crispy samosas that you can do on any day of the week and you and your family will definitely enjoy. For this recipe, measure four cups all-purpose flour into this bowl. Into the bowl, a teaspoon kosher salt, half a teaspoon sugar. Whisk everything together. Into the bowl, I'm going to add one cup water, but I'm going to start with a half of it and then add as needed. Then with a spatula, I'm going to bring this together to start forming a dough. We are looking for a dough here with the same consistency as a chapati. We'll move this to a dough mat and continue working on it. Incorporate all the flour here. For me, this dough doesn't need any more water, although it feels like it's a little hard. But remember, it's gonna continue absorbing the water that you have used. But always don't shy away to add a little few drops of water if you feel like you need it. Now this dough is almost there. As you can see, it's almost springing back. It needs some rest. Just finish this with a touch of olive oil, maybe a teaspoon. Now shape this dough into a ball. Give it a good rest, about half an hour. Wrap it, leave it alone. This dough is all rested. So feels very nice and soft. So now I'm gonna roll this into a long log and then cut it into pieces. See how smooth it's become? It's absorbed all the moisture that was in it, all the water, and this is ready to be rolled. So cut this dough into a half and then half into halves and then continue cutting. A half. Now cut these pieces into another half and then I'm going to form them into small balls like so. And then I'll continue this process until all these are cut into halves and shaped into small balls. And then have them rest. I'm all done rolling this into these small balls. So one, two, three, four, 
five, about 15 pieces because I had to readjust and make them about fairly same size. Now I'll bring the plastic wrap back, have them rest for about 10 minutes or so. Now these dough balls look all rested. You can just see how they are springing back. So divide them into five lots. Then I'm going to find a spot to keep them. For our next part, I need a rolling pin, some extra flour here for dusting, a brush, and some olive oil. Dust the mat here with a touch of flour. Take one of these balls, just spread it a tiny bit, some flour. Using a rolling pin, just make a small circle, probably just about maybe five inches or so. Just like so, I'll put it aside. One more, dust it, and roll to the same size as the other one. Now on to the last one. Just roll it, just like the other ones. Boom, that's done. So now I'll go back to the first one. Lay it right here. Spread some olive oil right on top. And then just spread it. Dust with flour. Lay one of these right on top. Repeat some oil. Brush. Dust with flour. Lay one more right on top. And then keep doing this, repeating the process. So remember we are doing this in batches of five. It will gonna be easier to work with. So they'll lay the last one right here on top. Then just make sure that they are all lined up, just fairly lined up. And then move this, put it aside, just cover with some plastic wrap. Take one more. Do the same process, some oil, brush, flour, top with one more, and then continue until they are all done. Now dust the mat with some fresh flour here, and then bring the first stack, some flour dusting on top. Now using my mat as a guide, I'm going to roll one of these stacks into about 14 inches uh, pizza size. So just make sure that they are all stacked together. Spread some flour right on top. And then I'll start rolling this into a circle about 14 inches. My cast iron is about 15 inches also, so I'll need some allowance. So that's loosely about 14 inches wide. This will go onto a hot cast iron. Just carefully lay it. So it snugly fits. And let this cook for low medium until it just slightly bubbles and then you wanna give it a turn. Now, once the slight bubble starts to appear, pinch it in one corner, 
give it just a turn you can help it with a spatula just press it all around pinch it again so this is a quick process at this point you want to be careful you don't want to cook it all the way we are not looking for any color and this for me is all done so take one more stack dust some flour and repeat the process Now bring the wraps onto a work table and all we want to do now is just peel them just so carefully. So you want to get to one end and then just peel this off. Just carefully lay it right on top. Keep repeating the process until you get these very thin sheets of dough, just like so. So you wanna be careful with this. You wanna work very fast at this stage because they tend to dry out just so quickly because of how thin they are. So get all these. So keep peeling these beautifully thin and delicate sheets. I'm going to separate this into a few batches here again. So always be careful with them. Take this. So all I want to do with this is just trim the rough edges here with a sharp knife. I don't have to be exact. If you're looking for perfect circles, you can do that. I don't need to because eventually this will form into triangles. This makes perfect chips, you can fry those. Now go into the rough middle of this, cut it all the way, and then turn them. Just carefully stack them again, then go into quarters. And you end up with these beautiful triangles. I'll put this aside. And this cut into thirds. Then stick this together. And you have an idea, you get those more like spring roll wraps. So I'll go ahead and finish them all. So boom, all done. Now I have some prepared samosa mix here. This is all beef, mildly spiced. I always make a big lot and then have it in the freezer. So I defrosted this and it's ready to go. Check out the recipe on how to do this on my channel. I will share it on top somewhere. This is very popular with my clients. Now this aside for a second, prepare the paste, about two tablespoons all-purpose flour, just a touch of water, it really doesn't matter, you can use egg wash too, that's all set, all you need is just a sort of a rough paste, this will be our glue. Now pick up one of these triangle. All I want to do is just bring it all the way almost close to the center and then with a brush get some of this paste just a little bit not too much and then just a touch in the inside and then I'm going to bring the other corner here just lay it right on top of this one and then lift the holding up and then you got this nice pocket that you can fill with whatever you are filling uh, your samosas with. In our case, we have this beef. So this goes back onto our sheet pan. 
So repeat, repeat until I'm all done with this batch. So one more paste. Bring this, wrap it, get a pocket. You are filling, get it in, get this. If it seems like it's opening at the bottom, you can always readjust. So get this and reline it. So the key is to make sure that you have a tight seal so the oil doesn't get in. So get the bigger flap, get the paste, bring all the way. Again, another triangle. Now bring the spring roll style. And then all I wanna do with this, is just get one corner here. Bring it. Make a pocket by lining all these. And just as the other ones, get the samosa mix. And then you got that rough triangle. I'll pick another one. So you wanna pick one corner of this very delicate flap, bring it all the way to this side like so, and then fold it over and then lift this up. So samosa mix. This one you can actually just lay it at the bottom and then just roll it over along the lines. And then this remaining flap, just paste it with your glue and you get that uh, triangle. So I'll finish the rest. So now fry this into a 350 Fahrenheit oil, ready to enjoy. This takes just about three minutes to four. All you're looking here is just for the color and just reheat the filling. When I make this, it reminds me of street food in Kenya especially in Mombasa, Nairobi, all major urban centers, you'll find the samosas fried all across and they are very delicious. Once you are satisfied with the color, take them off. Just listen to that, very crispy. Go in with the last batch. So there you go, all done frying. So friends, there you have it, a recipe that you can do on any day of the week and you and your family will definitely enjoy. I occasionally like to use this recipe, although I can admit I like to buy uh, my wraps ready prepared, especially when I'm doing my catering orders, but this is something that you can do for you and your family. So thank you so much for watching this one. Hey, if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, hey, hit the subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.